In this video, I'll show you how I interact between Capture One and Affinity Photo. And I'll also show the editing of an image along the way, so you may pick up a few more tips. A link for Capture One Pro and the equipment I use will be in the description. And at the time of this video going live, if you do purchase Capture One, you will get a free upgrade to Capture One 20 on its release. I hope you find this video useful. If you do, then please like and subscribe. So here we are with a nice image of Coventry Cathedral taken with my A7 III and my Tamron 28-75 2.8 zoom. A great combo taken handheld. And as you can see here, this is taken at 1 60th of a second ISO 800. It's at f2.8 and if we take a look, as you can see, it's pretty sharp. I'm really pleased with the results considering it was such low light. Now, I've already made the adjustments to get it to this stage. Let's take a quick look at the original RAW, which I have here. And as you can see, the colour and the tone are totally different. I've rotated and cropped and I've adjusted the lens distortion and a few other adjustments which we will quickly go over. And just with Capture One, we end up with this. I won't walk you through the Capture One edit, but if we take a look, we can see it's just a single layer. Let's go to the color tab, and I've adjusted the white balance. I've just cooled the whole image down. And if we take a look at the midtones on the color balance tab, I've just added some teal or cyan, more cyan really, into the midtones and slightly more towards the blue in the shadows. The highlights I have completely left alone, they're fine. Back to exposure, and I've increased the exposure a tiny bit and reduced the contrast all the way down, which gives a more flat starting point. Then I've increased the brightness and really decreased the saturation. I've maxed the high dynamic range just to completely eliminate any highlight clipping. I up the shadows to give us some shadow detail as I really did add some black into the levels here. I haven't touched the medium or high. And then I've done a nice big S curve to cope with the fact that I reduced the contrast and added quite a lot of shadow. Now when creating this sort of edit, it's not really planned. You have an idea where you're going to start and what you're after, but really you're playing around with it until you get the effect you like, adjusting one thing and then counterbalancing with something else until you have the image that you've, uh, well, you've managed to wrestle the image into the image that you would like to see. I'll leave a link in the description so that you can download the session containing all of the files. Then you can check out the settings and see how I turn the image from this to this. Okay, so the next stage is to show you why and how I use TIFF files to interact with Affinity Photo. So then, why would I use Affinity Photo to further enhance this image? There are a few reasons, one being that I would love to bring out some detail in the floor, and the wood, and the mural, and basically give it a slight HDR look to make it pop. In this case, I think a slight HDR look would look nice. Some people think it's corny, but I don't care, I like it. And also, I'd like to do a little clean-up, getting rid of some little bits and bobs in the image which I find distracting. Now, some of these things you can do in Capture One, but whilst I'm in Affinity Photo, I may as well make use of its superior tools. Actually, there is just one more thing I'd like to show you before we have a look at the export for Affinity Photo, and that is the in the Colour tab and the Colour Editor. Yep, here in the colour editor, I've made a couple of changes. I've just, I've gone into a selection of greens and made them more greeny blue, just with the hue slider here. And I've also increased the lightness. As to bring out this, which I think is a tapestry a bit, and I've also tweaked the hue of the blues slightly. Move the cyans and blues more into the blue. They were looking just a little bit pale. And I've also adjusted the hue of the purples a tad just to give their clothes a more pleasing colour. 
Okay then, let's take a look at passing this image over to Affinity Photo for further editing. This is the image we've been processing, so this is the one that we will edit. To pass the image over to an external application, all you have to do is right click on the thumbnail. Now you have two options, edit with, then your external application choice or open with and your external application. The difference between these methods is that edit with will create a brand new file. A new image which it will place underneath the current image and once created it will pass this new image into the external application of your choice. In my case Affinity Photo. So let's right click again and edit with and if I choose Affinity Photo I can choose a format here. I'm going to choose TIFF and 16-bit and there is a very good reason for this which we will take a look at in a little while. Let's just cancel this a second. Now if we right click on the image again and this time choose open with and then affinity photo, this time it will not create a new file, it will just open the actual file. It will open the file without applying any of the adjustments that you've made here. So even though we have all of these adjustments we've made here using our various tools, it won't apply any of these adjustments to the file that it passes to Affinity Photo when you use Open With. It literally just opens the file as if you've opened it from within Affinity Photo itself. So if we did Open With on this file, the raw file, let's try it. Let's open the raw file with Open With. Here we go. It arrives into Affinity Photo completely untouched. Not even Capture One's default adjustments have been applied. This is the completely raw file as it would be loaded normally into Affinity Photo. OK, let's get back to Capture One. Now, if we go back to the second instance of the raw file, the one we've been working on, what is called a variant in Capture One, the reason this looks different is because of all of the adjustments I've made using the various Capture One tools. Now again, if we use Open With on this file and choose Affinity Photo, the file will not contain the adjustments we applied using Capture One. It loads the original raw file. So Open With instructs the external application just to open the file from disk as is. OK, back to Capture One again. Now this time if I right click and choose Edit With, and choose Affinity Photo. I'll choose the TIFF file format and 16-bit and uncompressed. You could use compressed from the drop-down if you like. It's a lossless compression and will save you a little bit of space. I work in sRGB. Resolution is irrelevant because I'm using the fixed size of 100% of the image. It won't scale. Now when I click Open it will quickly create the new image, the TIFF file, here, with my Capture One adjustments applied. It will create a new bitmap from the original bitmap and the settings from the tools and create a brand new TIFF from this bitmap. It doesn't pass the tool information to Affinity Photo, it just creates a brand new bitmap, a new TIFF. Then it instructs Affinity Photo to open the new TIFF. OK, let's hit Open. You should briefly see it create the new image. We saw the image for a split second before it opened Affinity Photo. So if I just um, move Affinity Photo out of the way, like so, there's the new TIFF being displayed in Capture One's image strip. Now if we click back onto Capture One and take a look, and if I just select this new TIFF, you can see that even though it looks the same as our original file, it has no adjustments whatsoever. It's clean because it is a brand spanking new file. Capture One has taken the data from the raw file here and combined it with the adjustments to create our new TIFF. And I chose 16-bit rather than 8-bit TIFF because I like to retain as much image information as possible for further editing. OK, let's go back to Affinity Photo and here we have our brand spanking new TIFF ready for us to do further work. OK, so the first thing I would like to do with the image is to tone map it. 
OK, I'll just press Ctrl and J to duplicate the layer. I like to make a copy in case I mess up and for reference. Then just click this icon here to move to the tone mapping persona. This will just take a few seconds. And by default, let's just press Ctrl and 0 to center the image. By default, it has tone compression at 100%, which I don't want. I'll bring it right down. All I want to do is to enhance the detail. I'll just add some local contrast. As we up the local contrast, the detail becomes more defined. It increases the detail, which looks really nice, especially in places such as stone and wood. Now, I don't want to go mad with this. I don't want it to be too over the top. We want it just enough. A bit lower, I think, around that. I think that looks pretty nice. It's not overdone. We've got some detail, but I think now we need to just zip down and adjust the brightness a bit. As the detail refinement seems to have increased the brightness, or the mid-tone colours anyway, we'll just reduce the brightness to something that looks nice, about there. Then we need to add just a tiny bit of contrast, I think just one. That'll do. Click Apply. Then just wait a couple of seconds, and bingo. Now I'll just Control zero to centre the image. And if we turn the layer off and then on, as you can see, we have added detail to the walls and the floor and the wood, etc. And I think that's pretty nice. We have a slight HDR look without going over the top. Cool. I think it looks really, really nice. OK, now for a couple more adjustments. I'd like to brighten the highlights, especially in the centre area to bring out this figure here. So go to adjustments and add a shadows and highlights. Then all I do is up the highlights slider. I'll add quite a bit of highlight enhancement just to bring the area out, make it pop. And that is fine. And now I'm going to add a gradient. I'm going to pick the gradient tool here and set the type to elliptical from the list here. I'll drag my gradient out from the center, like so. This gradient is to stop the highlights being affected near the edges. I just want it in the center. And set the positions of the points. Need to get this right. That needs to be nearer the edge. Then I'll set the color of the center point to white, and that will indicate maximum effect of the shadow's highlights. Then choose an outside point and set the colour to black, which will indicate no effect at all. So we get a gradation from the centre to the outside. And I think that's pretty effective in bringing the eye to the centre portion of the image, where it's all happening. Right, the next thing is to do a little bit of a clean up, get rid of a few little distractions. First thing I want to do is to create a merged layer at the top, so Right-click on the top layer and choose Merge Visible. This new layer now contains all of the other underlying layers as one single layer combined. It's a single bitmap which I can now perform cleanup operations upon. Let's grab the In Painting tool, then the right bracket key just to increase the size of the brush a bit, then left bracket to shrink it a bit, about there. Make sure opacity is 100, flow 100, hardness at zero. Now I just want to get rid of a couple of little bits which I've noticed. I don't like that light there, the extra light. Okay, that's gone. The inpainting tool is great, it's like magic. So if we just go over to the wall over here, a couple of little dots that I want to get rid of. I don't like this highlight on the left side here. And that's okay. This area seems to be pretty good. I'm just looking around the scene just to see if there are any stragglers, any bits that look jarring. Just the remnants of that light there. But apart from that, I think we're pretty clean. I think I'll just get rid of a few of these little blobs on the wall here just to tidy the wall up, make it look a little less blobby. 
This is for demonstration purposes. Normally I would spend quite a bit more time on cleaning up the walls and getting rid of patches, things like that. Okay, we're done with the in-painting, so let's head on back to Capture One Pro. And I will finally show you why I use TIFFs for this process for my workflow. So if we quit, it'll ask us if we want to save. Just click yes. I do want to save my changes. Now this bit's important, save with layers. Just choose save with layers and you will be okay. Now Affinity Photo will export the item. It will save the image and then it will pop back into Capture One Pro. It only takes a little while and here we are. We're back in Capture One Pro. Affinity Photo has closed down. And our TIFF has its changes. Here we can see it's brighter. There's more detail in the floor and the walls. If we select the Capture One version for comparison, you can see there's less detail. Back to the TIFF and here's all the detail. Lovely. I have the nice HDR look that I was after for the image. And now for the biggest reason that I use the TIFF file format. It's because when Affinity Photo saves in the TIFF file format, it saves all of the layers, the adjustments and the filters and masks. It's great. Now, if we right click the TIFF and use open with, then choose Affinity Photo, it will open the TIFF file. And once Affinity Photo has opened the file, we can see we have all of our layers. Our masks, layers, adjustments, filters and everything are all preserved. So if we just turn off these layers one by one, you can see the effects disappearing one by one, all the way down to removing the HDR. Let's turn them all back on again, one by one. One, two, three. Excellent. As you can see, everything was saved. And now I can make further changes if I like. So let's just say add a vignette, filters and vignette. It could be any effect or anything obviously, so reduce the exposure a bit, reduce the hardness, increase the scale, and a final couple of tweaks to make the vignette look nice, and we're done. Let's have a quick look how that looks off on. And now when I quit, I'll just hit yes here, and it will just automatically export the TIFF. Because it saved with layers last time, it doesn't ask again. And again, it will save with all of the layers and adjustments applied, including the new one. Here we are back in Capture One. And after just a second for Capture One to catch up, we now have the vignette, which we can see here in the thumbnail too. And that vignette has been saved back into the file by Affinity Photo. And we can take a look. So we'll open with Affinity Photo just to see the actual file. And after a second, here we go with our vignette. Fantastic. And we can go on forever, really. I can continue editing my file. We'll just quit Affinity. It won't ask us to save as we made no changes. Now, the nice thing is if I do want to add a few more changes on the Capture One side of things, a few more adjustments, say, I may want to make some final adjustments before export. We can make changes like so. Maybe I'd just like to brighten the mid-tones or darken the shadows a little more. Then we can. We can make as many adjustments as we like. The problem now is, though, that if I do want to reopen the TIFF file here for editing using Open With, then it won't apply these adjustments here. Affinity Photo will open without these Capture One edits, so you've got to see it as two sides. One side Affinity and then one side capture one. It won't add these adjustments because it's only opening the file. These changes won't be added to the actual image unless I do another edit with, which would create another TIFF file with the changes embedded within it. Or they'd be added if I export the file, if I did right click and export variants, for instance. Or if I used process recipes to export the file for web, screen, print, or whatever. After all of that, you now know why I use TIFFs for editing between Capture One and Affinity Photo, because it preserves all of my editing, my layers, masks, filters, everything in the file. 
I can do as many affinity photo or capture one side changes as I like and everything is preserved. It's a really nice, flexible, non-destructive editing workflow.